the last tutorial we talked about uh, protons, electrons, neutrons, and where they are in an atom. We talked about electron shells or energy shells, also known as orbits, and we looked at reading the periodic table of elements. And in one of these boxes in the periodic table of elements, we talked about all the information that's there. We are going to be using uh, the atomic number and the atomic mass of an atom in order to determine the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons in a specific atom. So the first thing we've got to do is let's go the easy route and get rid of what we can automatically identify. And that is, number one, the number of protons. Now the number of protons is always going to be equal to the atomic number uh, of an atom on the periodic table. Now the atomic number is a whole number and it's usually found in one of the upper corners of the periodic table. And when I say a whole number, I mean a number without any decimals. This is a characteristic property of all atoms, being that every different atom has a specific number of protons or a specific atomic number. If we take, uh, and we're going to work with a, an example the whole way through here, if we take sodium as an example, sodium is found in period 3, so that's row 3, group 1, and its symbol is Na. So if I look at my periodic table for sodium, I'm going to see that it has an atomic number of 11. So that implies that it's got 11 protons or positive charges in one atom of sodium. So if a question asks you to identify the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons in an atom, well, automatically you can decide or you can decipher what the number of protons are by knowing that they're equal to the atomic number. Now, the second thing we can do is we can actually look up or determine the number of electrons. So when we're looking at the number of electrons, we know that an overall atom in nature is a neutral substance. That implies that if we know that there are 11 positive charges, or positive particles, I should say, in, a, in a, a, an atom of sodium, we know that there are then going to be 11 negative charges, which will cancel one another out, giving you that overall neutral charge. So the number of electrons in an atom is equal to the same number of protons. So here we write down that sodium is going to have 11 electrons because it has 11 protons. Now probably the most complicated um, thing to determine here is the number of neutrons. And that's because neutrons um, are held together, or basically their job is to hold protons together in uh, the nucleus, and their mass in addition to the mass of protons, is what gives us the overall, you know, the large portion of actual atomic mass. So the other number that we're going to be looking for in the periodic table is a number that is usually um, below the actual symbol of the element, and it usually has a decimal attached to it. It's a larger number uh, from the atomic number, but that means that that includes the number of protons and neutrons. So, if we want to summarize that last statement, we can say that in order to determine your number of neutrons, you're going to look at the atomic mass of an atom, and you're going to subtract from it the number of protons. Now, this is nice and easy to do, because we have both of the numbers, but there's a problem. We have to round the atomic mass to the closest whole number. So if we take sodium, for example, 
sodium is going to have an atomic mass of 22.989. So if sodium has an atomic mass of 22.989, you cannot have a decimal number of neutrons. You're going to have a whole number of neutrons. So to make this a little simpler for us, we're going to actually round this number. Now, 22.989, is that closer to 22 or is it closer to 23? It ends up actually being closer to 20, 23, so we actually round up to an atomic mass of 23. And if we do that, we are then going to subtract the atomic number from it. And if we remember from our first situation, the atomic number is the number of protons. So if you have an atomic mass of 23, which includes your neutrons and your protons, and you subtract your atomic number, which is just your protons, you should be left with just a number of neutrons. Now, you can never have less neutrons than you do protons, okay, in the actual work that we're doing. So if you see that your number of neutrons ends up actually being lower than your atomic number, you've done something wrong. You need to go back and check your rounding. So this is going to give us 23 minus 11, which equals 12 neutrons. Now, we'll see that in some atoms, in a lot of the, the, the first, let's say, you know, first 30 atoms or so, the numbers are fairly similar to one another. Protons will always equal the atomic number. Electrons will always equal the number of protons. And your neutrons will either be the same as your atomic number or very similar. It's only when we get to these larger atoms with these higher atomic numbers that we see these huge discrepancies. Case in point, if we were to take, let's say, uh, gold which is period 6, group, tw uh, group 11, we'd see that it has a mass or an atomic mass of 196.9665, whereas it only has an atomic number of about 79. So we're going to see that there are a lot more than 79 neutrons there. There are over 100 neutrons in an atom of gold. But for the example of sodium, we can actually round this up. Then when we present our answers, we can actually say that the number of positive protons is 11. The number of negative electrons is 11. And the number of neutrons is 12. So this would count as your final answer provided that you show the work or, or how you came to get all three of your um, different particles in an atom.